Hello everyone, we're going to be talking today about maps and map making during the Civil War time period, specifically here in present-day Newport News in the early stages of the Peninsula Campaign of 1862. I'm standing now in the gentleman's parlor of Lee Hall Mansion. Uh, Lee Hall became the epicenter of Confederate activity in the spring of 1862 here on the Peninsula as it became the headquarters for Confederate General John Magruder and later General Joseph Johnston. For officers planning a campaign, such as McClellan's Peninsula Campaign, maps were important for a number of different reasons. Not only did generals need to know how to move their armies on a battlefield and to a battlefield, they also needed to be able to transport the miles of supply wagons that fed and kept the soldiers in fighting condition with supplies like ammunition. Good maps also told of obstructions that might make it harder to move an army or its supply wagons through an area such as a waterway, swamp, or steep ground. During the planning of the Peninsula Campaign, General McClellan needed to know how to transport an army of 120,000 men up the peninsula from Fort Monroe and Newport News Point all the way to Richmond. In addition, he needed to know how best to deal with Magruder's army of 13,000. Strangely, in an area that was first settled by the English in 1607, there was no good map of the peninsula. Union map makers, known as topographical engineers, prepared a map for McClellan to plan with by using maps that they could find. They had to resort to a map made by the French in the American Revolution during the 1781 Siege of Yorktown. It turned out that this map had some deadly flaws. Instead of showing the Warwick River, now dammed up along most of its course as the Newport News City Reservoir, beginning outside of Yorktown and cutting the peninsula all the way to the James River, it showed it running parallel to the James. McClellan, believing that Magruder was in forts surrounding Yorktown, similar to what Cornwallis' British troops did 81 years prior, ordered part of his army to march straight to Yorktown, while another part used a road closer to the James to come in behind them and quickly surround them and force them to surrender. What his troops soon found out, though, was that their maps were not accurate. Magruder, though, had learned about the Warwick River from locals such as Mr. Lee from Lee Hall and knew to take advantage of it damming it in multiple places and building forts on the other side. McClellan, not knowing what he was up against, stopped his troops and began to build siege works to place heavy cannon to blast the Confederates out of the lines. Meanwhile, he needed to know what was actually in front of him and sent his topographical engineers to survey the ground to better understand what he was up against, including sending some of them up in a hot air balloon to observe. Some of the most common means of surveying land to create a military map in the field, he used either compass readings or something called a plane table. By using a compass and protractor, a crew could take compass readings from two locations, and by plotting those readings on the map, the point would be where they intersect on the map. A plane table uses a similar method, but instead of having to take compass readings, a table with paper secured could be oriented by a compass towards the same direction at two points, and a tool known as an olidade which looks basically like an oversized ruler with a telescope or sights attached, could be pointed towards a map feature in a line drawn from two points. As with the compass, where those two lines intersected was the point being mapped. A Union crew using a plane table was surveying Confederate fortifications near Winds Mill, now in Newport News Park, in April of 1862. The white paper was something that visually stood out to the Confederates in that area, and a cannon was sighted at it. When the gun fired, the first shot struck the table with the group around it, killing or injuring the whole group. According to one topographical engineer, the plane tables were put away until the Peninsula Campaign was over and compasses, which were less of a target, were used. Many maps continued to be produced by both sides during the Civil War, by their topo topographical engineers, or by civilians paid to make them. While many maps created were very inaccurate, especially those produced by using maps made before the war, many maps created by those who actually surveyed the ground they mapped were very accurate. These maps today would almost be considered a work of art because of the amount of color and detail put into them. That detail, though, was crucial for officers in their planning. By quickly being able to look at a map and seeing blue for water, green for trees, or black for roads, a general can make a quick assessment and move on in their planning or quickly understand where to send troops in a, black, in a battle. Those who did the surveys also were heavily used for the information they gathered as they came in contact with civilians in the area 
who may divulge important information, or they could be used as guides to lead troops along unfamiliar roads and paths. One such example was from two Union topographical engineers who were asked as the armies were fighting around Richmond to find another place to ford a swamp, and when it was found, was then responsible for guiding the troops back to it at night. By consulting their notes, they were able to find it again with little more than candlelight to see the way. While officers were often trusted and many times trained with the basics of how to lay out a map while traveling through an area, the accuracy of those maps could vary by quite a bit. They may be good enough to consult to get a general idea of the area, but a map created by surveying could make all the difference to a battle or to a campaign, and especially to those officers responsible for feeding and supplying the soldiers. The better the map, the better an army could fight and continue to move. But an inaccurate map could change the fortunes of a whole campaign.